All right, everybody, we'll see if we can um, do this in a little bit shorter of a fashion. I know I've kind of gone on and on with some of these models, but I wanted to pack in, you know, the variety of case studies for you just to help you out with the reading, which um, is, is a challenging reading. That McKay text can be very challenging. It's kind of lengthy also. Um, so one of the things that I think is uh, important uh, to look at is just this like broader question of um, religious tolerance, how that comes about. You know, today in our modern society, we kind of have an expectation that, you know, we're going to live in a society where the state will protect our own, you know, religious freedoms. If we want to exercise whatever religion or no religion, the state is going to protect our efforts to do that. And we also don't expect the state to establish a religion. You know, in this time period of the Reformation in Europe, for the most part, there is an established religion that the state uh, mandates, and it is um, part of the time period to kind of address what happens when you have a great deal of religious diversity, which increases during the Reformation. It kind of begs these new questions and what the role of the state will be. And while we may not see complete uh, religious freedom during this time protected by the state, we might see some movements toward that. Okay, And one of those comes about in France uh, during the time period of the mid-1600s. So we can talk about France as a place that is fairly uh, diverse, um, you know, as all the areas are. It's not that um, France is going to be uh, unique in terms of uh, having religious diversity, but we have the Reformation that has taken hold, so about maybe a sixth, maybe a tenth, depending on what source you look at. Uh, you know, good percentage of the society is Calvinist, majority of the population is Roman Catholic, and the state is also Roman Catholic. But there had been some efforts already in France to reduce the power of the Roman Catholic Church. We see this with Francis I, who tries to pick some of the church leaders, not let the church do that. So there's already been kind of a little bit of a shakeup between the church and the political system, and France kind of goes into this time period with um, largely being a Catholic state, but seeing this kind of diversity um, with many, many Calvinists. And uh, this uh, religious diversity, you know, doesn't lead to uh, tolerance. Um, it naturally it leads to um, a great deal of conflict. And uh, one example of this is St. Bar Bartholomew's uh, Massacre. This uh, is where uh, there's a wedding, uh, Charles Navarre is, uh, Henry Navarre, sorry, is getting um, married, um, and there is a uh, kind of crackdown against um, people who are um, pro uh, against the Calvinists. Um, a, one uh, person involved in this is Catherine de' Medici, um, but there is essentially kind of a um, crackdown against Calvinists uh, by Catholics, and this sets off a huge amount of re religious violence, not only uh, in the name of the state, but kind of people against people. You know, Catholics seek out uh, Calvinists, and there's a great deal of violence. Um, churches are destroyed. Uh, people are brutally killed. And this goes on and on in France, and it's sometimes instigated by Catholics. Sometimes it's instigated by the Calvinists. So it's just kind of a back and forth uh, religious warfare. Henry the Fourth, or Henry of Navarre, um, kind of establishes himself, maybe similar to uh, Elizabeth in England, as somebody who's going to try to put like the political goals of peace, you know, higher than uh, religious, you know, right and wrong. And he uh, does this by even changing his own uh, religion. He is a Calvinist, uh, Protestant, but he will become a uh, Roman Catholic. And he kind of says, you know, oh, well, right, this is something that I, I do in order to get more people to kind of uh, see me in a certain light. Um, and then uh, the Bar St. Bartholomew's Day Massacre, um, which created such horrific uh, violence, Henry IV of Navarre will attempt to kind of create um, a state, you know, legal framework that enables uh, people to get along. So in an effort to, you know, Welch, some of the violence that you see on the screen, um, Henry IV enables through the um, Edict of Nantes, it's spelled N-A-N-T-E-S, but pronounced Nantes. It kind of, um, you know, is a uh, opportunity for people to coexist. And um, Calvinists are allowed to practice their religion with some restriction. So it's still a Roman Catholic state. Um, there is still a dominant religion in the area of Paris, for example. Calvinists are not allowed to participate their, in their religion. That is kind of seen as like a sacrosanct, sacrosanct, sacrosanct place for um, uh, the Roman Catholics. So there's a variety of different constraints, but Calvinists are given some degree of religious freedom. You know, again, this doesn't encompass everyone's religious beliefs, but it does show kind of the state 
putting forth some uh, ways in which the state can protect uh, religious rights. Okay, the result of the Reformation does end up that you know we see Christianity incredibly divided. It had already been divided in 1054, where um, Eastern Orthodox and Roman Catholicism kind of split. Um, this is an additional split. Uh, we also see uh, the Roman Catholic Church becoming uh, much more uh, like seeking its role outside of Europe. So we see the Roman Catholic Church move to the Americas and other places um, in Asia, for example, and that becomes uh, fairly uh, significant um, especially in the colonial period where we see a lot of Roman Catholic uh, missionaries and activity. Um, we do get a lot of formation of new religions. So if you look on the right, a variety of different strains of Protestantism. Uh, you can see kind of branch off Anglican, Calvinism, Anabaptist, you know, Roman uh, Catholic, um, and Eastern Orthodox, all being uh, Christian religions, all see significant um, kind of uh, belief system connected to uh, the uh, historical and, you know, to Christians divine figure of uh, Jesus Christ. But you can see on the right hand side, all the variety of different, you know, kind of denominations of either Protestants or of um, Anabaptists or of, um, you know, the uh, variety of other uh, types of strains, you know, Adventists, Christian scientists, uh, Church of the Latter-day Saints, Roman Catholics, right? Variety of the branches. So kind of check that out if that's of interest to you. Um, there is also uh, changes in the relationship between church and state. A lot of you suggest the state becomes more powerful. I think to a large degree, you are right. Um, we see the states um, moving toward a much more like monarchical um, type of uh, role and uh, other questions about state power are going to be kind of ahead of Europe. Um, this is also a time period of uh, a lot of um, kind of oppression for individuals who don't fit into uh, one of these Christian uh, religious groups. So we see, you know, upticks, which in, in a pattern that had already been happening in anti-Semitism. Um, so a lot of um, witch hunts, which affect individuals who are seen as heretical, you know, people who don't fit into the um, religious uh, branches, you know, are kind of uh, questioned. In a lot of cases, you know, people are wrongly questioned because of a variety of other reasons, you know, witch hunts become embroiled with a whole bunch of other um, factors. So people are uh, put to death, you know, widely, uh, burnings at the stakes, um, you know, a whole bunch of other types of punishments, ostracizing people. Uh, we see this in the new world as well. All right, so the fishbowl questions, I think you guys handle that um, very, very well, and um, we'll see you in virtual school. <laughs>